everyone, it's Matt from Akuma Mods back again with our review of the FL Sun Super Racer. So uh, FL Sun reached out to me and uh, wanted to get my, you know, thoughts on the FL Sun Super Racer. Uh, I'll be honest, this is my first Delta printer, uh, and uh, it's very, very interesting to say the least. First off, it is an insanely fast. Um, if you guys didn't watch the uh, unboxing and setup video, um, you know, we were printing a normally like a two and a half, maybe three hour print that's kind of small uh, in less than 30 minutes. Uh, probably the fastest print I've ever done on a live stream while doing an unboxing. So a uh, very, very fast printer. Now, the big question is, while it's fast, does it print well? Well, as you can see, sort of. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Um, now, this was supposed to be a gray fox mask from uh, Metal Gear Solid. And uh, it started to print pretty well up into a certain point. You know, uh, I don't know, maybe about three hours into it, it decided to delaminate. Um, and I think it's more or less this glass bed, not so much the printer. Uh, and I know that for sure because it seems like the glass bed is a little bit warped. Um, and the only reason why I know that is because, well, one of the prints I had, uh, the bed was leveled um, and it obviously wasn't because it started coming loose from one side of the build plate. Now, I haven't gotten too much off of this printer, so I, I don't really have too much to show you guys. And the stuff that most of the stuff that I did print off of this um, were customer prints, so I couldn't even show you the, that um, even if I wanted to because they were here and they were gone. Um, so, you know, I was allowed to show them, but they unfortunately aren't here. Um, but I will say that in general, this printer has been printing pretty nicely. Um, I've had a pretty epic failure on its first go doing a max build volume, uh, which was a Minecraft Creeper. But again, uh, I'm going to chalk that one up to the filament because it basically got to about here and then it started just, you know, having holes in the filament and whatnot. And uh, it was a brand new filament. I never used that type of it, uh, filament. It was a luminous filament. And as we know, that's very abrasive, much, much more abrasive than regular PLA is. And um, so it was kind of set up for failure anyway. And uh, yeah, it definitely did. Um, it was a terrible, terrible print. I haven't had a print that bad in probably two and a half years easily. Um, so I ended up, uh, uh, you know, taking the print off. I didn't even check the nozzle to make sure that it was okay. I just went ahead and put on a, uh, another used spool and I went ahead and I hit prints and, uh, it came out pretty good, but, uh, yeah, my man hands, my bare hands, uh, kind of, uh, destroyed it a little bit. So I'm going to try and show you guys what it looks like, uh, at least kind of pieced together, but, uh. It came out pretty well, and it was it's a nice color. It kind of matches my shirt, actually. But uh, it's definitely more like uh, silky red. Uh, I don't even know who sent me this this filament, to be on all honest. But uh, my son wanted a creeper, so I decided to print off something that would, you know, be pretty big for the build plate, uh, you know, and kind of max it out or get close to the max build volume on it. But it came out pretty well, you know. I, I'm not too... Uh, concerned about it the uh the issues that you see with like the binding here i don't know if that's a printer issue or the actual filament because again in all honesty here i've been using pretty much my open spool filaments that i got from amazon just to get rid of them and uh they've been printing pretty well uh surprisingly even with the insane humidity we've had uh this past month <coughs> excuse me and um the uh the past week that we've had but uh they've been printing all right you know not not terrible and they're not you know stringy or anything like that 
but uh, you know it's it's been printing pretty well. Like I said, there there were a handful of other prints I had here, but unfortunately I couldn't get those out there and uh, show you guys. So this is kind of more or less the the one print to rule them all uh, out of anything. And I think that that print alone kind of speaks for itself because you know it it does have a nice sheen and correct layering to it. Um, obviously, whoever made or designed this didn't. Uh, didn't properly splice together the uh, the T here from the head to the the body and everything. So that could also attribute it to uh, his legs, you know, popping off when I used the scraper on it. But uh, other than that, it's a really, really insane machine. It's got a lot of stuff that um, a lot of people are looking for that usually upgrade their printers with, um, such as a uh, dual geared extruder, which is really, really nice to have. That'll pretty much, you know, put anything through it and not have a, a major issue with it. We do have dual cooling ducts. I do believe that this has a Volcano hot end looking at it, um, which I'm, I'm pretty, um, I'm almost 100% sure that's a Volcano hot end because it does look exactly like the Any Cubic Vipers one uh, in the back there. Um, we do have some carbon fiber, um, I guess, kind of holders or rails however you want to call it and then there are linear rails on the inside here that are kind of belt driven as well so they kind of pulled out all the stops on this printer so i guess that's why it's called the super racer because it, it really is is like the best of the best that they can provide um i haven't really had any major issues again and besides that one print and i'm pretty sure that's the filament um i'll have to test it out on the uh the viper over there just to verify that it is but i'm i'm gonna pretty much say that it is just because it's it's an oddball filament that i've never used so my settings could be way off on that but uh yeah we we have been using stock cura settings that they had on the sd card uh comes with uh cura 4.4 i think it is um and pretty much we've just been using the stock profile I'm not a big fan of Cura. I usually use Simplified 3D or Prusa Slicer, uh, but I just haven't had time to set up everything and get the, that, uh, that all ready for a new printer. Um, so, you know, that, that's just kind of how it is. The, uh, the screen and everything is very, very nice. It's uh, a nice little touch screen. I'm not a big fan of the, the beeping, but I'm sure we can turn that off somewhere on here. Um, and... Uh, it does have a interesting auto level, at least for me. It might be something that comes with the deltas, but it, you kind of you place the head on it. It does have a magnetic attachment, and then it goes down and it kind of probes, almost like a um, a CNC system, uh, where it probes not the nozzle but like a speck in in front of it, and then it'll it'll automatically adjust from that level to where the nozzle is. And then obviously you kind of have to baby step it a little bit, which I did end up doing, uh, but it wasn't much. So it was maybe like one or two times I had to baby step and we were good as gold. So as you can see, the, the print on here is stuck down pretty well, but uh, the border, you know, just kind of hit it really fast and that was the disaster right there. So um, I don't know, like I said, if it's speed, but I, I, I'm more or less guessing that it's going to be the... Uh, the build plate here because as i'm looking at this now this is turned around so that's why it looks kind of goofy because you know everything is kind of fit here on my my desk to get it up out of the way and uh yeah now that i'm looking at this this is the uh left hand side of the build plate so that it that go ahead that verifies geez if i can talk that verifies that this has got an issue with the build plate at least. So um, one of two things I can do to that, um, either contact FL Sun and see if we can get a replacement on that, or um, you know go ahead and get an upgraded build plate with like a uh, magnetic uh, remo removable one and maybe do like a textured PEI sheet. That would be really, really cool with this. But uh, but yeah, if you guys are looking to get into 3D printing and you want a really, really cool printer, like when I think of 3D printing, these are the printers that I just automatically think about all the time just because of how crazy they look 
when they're they're working their way and this thing is insanely fast i had this thing up to 180 millimeters a second printing away and that's what this was printing it was like this one i think uh maxed out at like 170 but uh still just insane and i mean the the lines look at that's that's 170 millimeters a second if i tried to do that on any other printer that i printed with this would be a, a mess this would literally be this every single time. There's no way that a, a normal printer can keep up with that. But again, that, that's coupled with the dual geared extruder as well as the Volcano hot end. You can get that type of uh, material in there at a fast pace and it'll put it right through. Uh, so for any of you guys looking to do upgrades to printers, like this is pretty much set to go. You can upgrade the nozzle, I do highly suggest that, with the Volcano hot ends because they're just meant to flow with higher end nozzles, not higher end, but larger nozzles. Um, when I first was using Volcano hot ends, uh, what, back about two and a half years ago now at uh, TH3D Studio, they, uh, they had a printer there that was called Bertha and it had a Volcano hot end. And we decided to put a 0.8 nozzle on it, and it was just insane how much faster it was compared to a normal 0.4 nozzle. <clears throat> so, uh, excuse me. And, uh, you know, we, we set off a print between a flagship printer that was there and, um, you know, kind of a customized one with a Volcano hot end. And that print, I think, was like three and a half hours. And on the normal flagship printer, it took like 14 or 16 and a half hours, sorry. So uh, yeah, so there's uh, quite a big uh, gap there. But uh, one of the downsides to upgrading your nozzle to something of that size is when it comes to supports, you gotta be very careful and have make sure that they're very like dense or, or very thin because w when they start to uh, melt together, uh, yeah, it's basically like chiseling away uh, rock, you know, if you're doing like an archae archaeological dig. can't believe I said that uh, correctly. But, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to try and set this print off again and see if we can get it. I might try and tune it down just a little bit at like 80%, so maybe it'll print at like 120 millimeters a second. But still, that's pretty insanely fast. Just to, uh, to give you an idea of how fast that is, uh, I believe a normal Ender 3 out of the box on a stock profile prints at 80 millimeters a second. In fact, I think even the uh, the Anycubic Viper right there um, prints at 80 millimeters a second, and that one definitely will. Um, and an Ender 3, it'll print, but it does struggle a little bit. You should t turn it down a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that just tells you right there that this can print twice as fast as most of the printers um you know that you see out there uh now granted one of the downsides of it is it is kind of expensive but if you go on fl sun's website uh, i believe it was 405 uh dollar us dollars the last time that i saw it and i will leave a link in the description below uh just to you know get you guys that that deal i don't have any affiliate links if there was one that pops up on amazon you know i'll throw one in there but uh, as of right now, it's just a normal FL Sun link. It's nothing spectacular. So uh, expect shipping from China um, to uh, to have you wait a little bit because, you know, it is coming from China. But uh, other than that, I really don't have too much bad things to say about it. In fact, I really don't have anything bad besides the, the, the bill plate being slightly warped. Um, and, you know, I tried fixing that with, uh, with some good old Aquanet, and that's why this is insanely stuck down. But uh, obviously, you know, Aquanet can only help you so much if you, uh, you have a warped bed. So, you know, it is what it is. But again, we're going to try and set this off and just see if we can level it out a little bit more and uh, kind of go from there. But, uh, yeah, I will say that in terms of building the printer... It was actually pretty straightforward, very, very easy. The instruction manual was very well written on everything. Um, you know, the, the only 
kind of like wonky thing that I wasn't too happy about is on this extrusion rail, uh, you kind of set the power cable that goes up into the top here, you guys might be able to see. And it's an aviation connector, and it just kind of like lays in the track here, which eh, I'm kind of so-so about. You know, I wish they had a little bit better, um, you know, design on that. But who knows? That's that's room for you know a change in the future. Um, but uh, yeah, it it was super simple to set up. Anybody could really use this printer, and it's a really really badass printer to be in all honesty. And especially when it's running, it looks insanely crazy. Uh, I should probably, you know, do a follow-up review or put out some videos of this thing printing because it's just, it's crazy when it goes around and it's just like back and forth, back and forth, like how crazy this thing is. It's just, it's insane how, how, how these things work. I always loved the look of these Delta printers, but I heard so many horror stories about you know it works when it wants to and i'm like i don't want to go back to an ender 3 i'm i'm good with that but uh so far it's it's been printing pretty well and uh like i said the issues that i do have i'm pretty sure it's this uh this build plate here because the other print that we did uh that was like this uh we had it warp a little bit on the one side so you know but again that that print was a disaster from the get-go so uh, that not only was it a build plate issue, it was also a filament issue because obviously we set it right after that one and boom, perfectly fine. Uh, no, no real big issues there uh, besides, you know, like I said, that, that little bit that's right there, which might be a heating issue out of anything. So, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I don't really have much else to say about the printer. Um, you know, like I said, I'll, I'll have a link down below to FL Suns, and if I get an affiliate link for Amazon, I'll throw one in there as well. But, uh, you know, if you guys are looking for a really, really cool printer that uh, doesn't really take up a lot of space, by far, this is, this is a really, really good printer. And it's got a pretty good build volume. Uh, I want to say it was like 260, and, uh, you know, that's, that's 260 around, so... You can print a helmet on here. Like, I don't know if it'll fit my dome, but uh, this this was a pretty sized, a pretty good sized uh, helmet that I was working on. So um, I'll have to double check on that. And uh, you know, for Z height wise, you pretty much are like uh, I think it's three hundred and fifty or maybe four hundred. Uh, I forget exactly what the specs are. I know I'm doing this terrible on this uh, this review, but. Uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much all I really have to say about it. It is a really, really cool printer, and it's got a lot of uh, nice upgrades to it. So if you're looking for a one-and-done printer, this is probably going to be a really, really good buy for you if you're looking for something that has a compact space, looks really cool printing, um, and has a lot of upgrades to do whatever you need to with it. So, um, you know, that's that's pretty much all I have to say about it. So... Uh, if you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and leave them down below. I will try and answer as soon as I possibly can. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Till next time, happy printing.